And here we have today's problem. The bezels on these clocks are shot. There's corrosion on them and they're just gone. So this is how I change them using this device. It's a block of plastic machine so that the bevels fit in there nice and tightly with just the amount of the fold sticking up. You start by gently, and I mean gently, prising away the lip that's been folded over the edge of the clock body. Gently working your way round, a little bit at a time. The whole idea here is not to create too many ruffles in the edge. You want to lift it gradually and bring the metal back to a vertical face without any puckers in it at all. So it's best to just nibble away at it rather than try and take it out in big lumps. You're stretching the metal back to its original form before the clock was put together. You work around with a small screwdriver until it's basically as far as you can get and then you move up to another size, a wider blade and again proceed round it gently, very gently opening up the case. Eventually you'll get round to the point where it's vertical enough to lift the clock body out of the bezel. All the time the plastic is supporting it. And there we are. Inside you'll find the glass, a little defect deflector ring which I think stops shadows being cast on the clock and a rubber seal. You take those away, give the clock a bit of a clean if it needs it but in this case concentrate on the bezels this is the second one <laughs> this is done in exactly the same way now at this point here I'm afraid I've turned the camera off instead of on so this is the camera that was running in the background what I'm doing here is I'm taking the original bezels and stripping the chrome off in preparation for nickel plating. I did buy two new bezels but for some reason they were about a millimetre too small in the diameter. Uh, they were listed as Smith's block bezels but as I say they didn't fit. So I thought I'd give it a go and try and replate them with this setup that I've collected together. I'm afraid the camera wasn't on I probably turned it on and then this is what it took so come the time of actually doing the job I must have turned it off anyway I'll show that at a later date I'm sure I'll be doing it again I stripped the chrome off and then polished out any little imperfections um, little dimples corrosion with wet and dry until it was absolutely as good as I could get polished wise. It almost looked like it was chromed when I'd finished. I ended up using 1500 wet and dry but as you can see I got all the marks out of it and it doesn't look too bad. I then proceeded to nickel plate it again. Sorry about the camera work. Seems to be a trait of mine at the moment. And there's the results a nickel plated bezel ring which I was very very happy with anyway back to the bezels um, again giving the clock a bit of a wipe just to make sure there's no dirt in there there'd be nothing worse than putting it all back together again and finding a fingerprint on it on the inside so I used a bit of salvo aerosol on the glass to take away any rust marks that have been left by the rubber gasket and generally cleaned everything so that when you put it back it looks pristine. And now it's a simple case of assembling the bits, threading the glass into the gasket and then the, I'll call it a shadow ring. bit fiddly but it's, it's a good idea to get it nice it makes life easier as you go on 
Yeah, there's a shadow ring going in now. This procedure would be exactly the same if you were using new bezels rather than replated. And there we are. Now, what I do here is press down on the clock quite firmly and just push over in a couple of places the metal. It's to locate the clock rather than try and get it all done. You know, it just grips the clock in the right place so that when you start to fold the metal in on itself, the clock isn't going to be loose. Once you get it fairly good, I use a little nylon punch just to start moving the metal in. As we're taking it apart, you have to go around very, very slowly, gently working the metal in, avoiding dents or puckers. The problem is, you see, you're working the metal and it gets hard, work hardens. So you have to avoid that if you can. So gently working your way around. The punch I'm using is quite blunt, so it moves the metal across. You, know, you see it looks more like a, a blunt pencil than a punch. But gradually you'll see it starting to roll over and it'll get to the point where the punch won't mark it anymore, won't move it anymore. Again, patience is the key here. Once you've got it that far, I've got an aluminium... Oh, there must be a pucker there. But I use an aluminium drift at the very end to flatten down the metal, that final bit. This is so it can be held nice and square to the clock body. And again, just gently working way around, taking your time, trying to get a nice finish. Gradually straighten the punch up to get the, the flat surface. Bringing the metal down gently. There you are, you see it's vertical there. I'll let this run for a bit so you can see it's just gently, gently working your way around. You might have to go around three or four times before you get it absolutely spot on. And of course the other one was done in exactly the same way. This is nearer the end, you can see how flat it's got now. There we are, quick wipe down and a polish. And there you have it. New bezel, or old one replated. And nickel is so close to chrome that I doubt anybody will even notice. Very pleased with that. I think it turned out nice. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>